Hello, I'm Lewis and this is DIY Machines, a channel where I get to share with you step by step how to build your own awesome projects. For this one, I'm going to show you how to build these awesome kinetic coasters. Not only can you satisfy your fidgety fiddling fingers by turning a coaster by hand, the base, of course, conceals a hidden secret. Place a coaster against the base and it will automatically detect the presence of the coaster and begin to turn it for you. This is all made possible thanks to the tiny DC motor, batteries and sensors all concealed in the bottom of this base. And thanks to these tiny magnets, you can connect several of these in a chain and watch them as they turn mesmerizingly beneath your glasses. Now I have created loads of designs for you to choose from. In fact, there are so many that you can mix and match them to make thousands of possible combinations. Keep them in their natural wooden color or get creative and use some paints, oils, Posca pens, whatever you like to decorate it and make them your own. These ones are made from plywood cut on the Creality Falcon 2 22 watt diode laser machine. And yes, 3D printing them is also possible. However, I feel there's a certain timeless charm when it comes to making coasters from wooden materials. And stick around until the end of the video and I'll go over how I made this personalizable glassware also on the Falcon 2. They make for some very cool gifts. This video has been made possible thanks to Creality, PCB Way, and my amazing patrons and YouTube subscribers. Thanks. You're only going to need a few things to build some of your own coasters. For the wooden ones, you'll need some three millimeter sheet wood, a couple of battery holders, a small geared DC motor, some super glue and tiny magnets, a couple of batteries, a few reed switches, and some bolts and screws. Now, to make the assembly of the electronics much more convenient, I've gone ahead and created an optional custom PCB for this project. You'll find links, of course, to all of the parts mentioned down below this video, as well as links to some project kits that I have available in my international Etsy shop some both with and without the wooden parts pre-cut for you. If you're going to be building the 3D printable coasters, then you're going to need some 3D printing filament instead of the wooden sheets. If you head over to my website, there you'll find the 3D files to download and print, as well as some slightly modified build instructions to better suit these 3D printed designs. For now, we'll build the first of our wooden coasters together. And then later on in the video, I'll show you how to build that really cool smart storage base. Now I'm going to be using this Falcon 2 20 watt diode laser, which Creality have kindly sent to me so I can test it whilst designing and sharing some projects with you. As we go along throughout this project, I'll give you some tips and tricks about using this that I've learned along my way, as well as highlighting some of the things I like and don't like about this machine. First off, the machine came pretty much completely ready to go. All I needed to do was attach the legs, tool head, and air assist pump. Easy. So far, this is a very easy setup process. Now, I don't know why, but the cutting surface they supplied is extremely small. So I've gone ahead and spent some of my money and ordered this much larger, more appropriately sized one. Next, we can add our material onto the work bed. Now I'm using this three millimeter thick laser ply from Laser Ply here in the UK, as it's specially engineered to work with laser machines. And I find it cuts very well on this diode laser. Now we need to first set the focus through setting the height of the tool head on the machine. To do this, grab your focusing tool and see where it says for cutting three millimeter thick material. Place this on top of your material, loosen the two screws that control the height of your tool head and rest it on this ledge. 
You can then tighten these screws back up and remove the focus tool. To turn on the Falcon 2, you will first need to enable the machine with its keys, reset the emergency stop button, and then flick on the power switch. I like the fact that I can prevent anyone from walking up to the machine and playing with it by locking it and removing the keys. It's a very welcome safety precaution. Lightburn is a great choice of software and I highly recommend using it. Open up the software and drop in the DXF cut file. We'll start with one of the spiral based coaster designs. Position the artwork towards the bottom left of the canvas. Then set the speed strength of laser and number of passes whilst making sure that the air assist option is enabled. Close this and then home the tool head. With this done we can manually move the head to the bottom left of our workpiece before pressing the frame button to check that all of our artwork to be cut fits onto our sheet of wood. Now before we do absolutely any cutting, I cannot stress enough that you and anybody else who has sight of this machine whilst it's in use must use eye protection. And that doesn't mean just a safety squint, you need to get yourself a proper pair of laser safety glasses. You've only got one pair of eyeballs, look after them. Let's start the cutting in light burn. Now, as you can see, one downside is that the cutting and engraving process gives off fumes. This is because the concentrated laser beam heats the material to such a high temperature that it vaporizes or burns the area where the laser hits. This process on the material releases various gases and particles into the air, which are the fumes which we can see now. So let's stop this for a moment and do something about it. So I opted to add Creality's own enclosure with its built-in extraction system. Not only will this help us with the fumes, but it also adds a lot of other additional safety to this machine. And to be honest, I wouldn't want to run it without it. Another idea which I had, and I can highly recommend, is to add this USB powered security camera. It's an UFI security camera which costs just £22. This means I can now watch what the laser is doing on their app from my phone from an entirely separate room, which is the best way to protect yourself. It's also HomeKit compatible, so I can watch it from any of my Apple devices. All the laser cut files for the parts made in this video are linked to down below. They've been designed for wood sheets measuring no more than 400 by 300 millimeters in size. You can of course use Lightburn to rearrange the parts if you need to fit them onto smaller sheets. Simple as that. Now, as you can see, the parts have cut out nice and cleanly and are easy to separate from the main board. And I've got a quick tip for you here. If you grab yourself some blue painter's tape or wide masking tape, you can use a piece of this to help remove the smaller pieces from the bed of the laser cutter. Okay, so let's assemble the first one of our coasters together. We'll do the spiral one, which we laser cut just now. I've created some help sheets as well for each of the parts that labels and identifies what the various pieces are that you've cut. They'll look a bit like this. You'll also see in the corner of the video down here as we go, I'll show you the part we're using in each step. And to help you make, to help you not make any mistakes, if there are two parts that look similar, I'll show you both like this and make sure that you pick up the right one before you glue them together. And I shouldn't have to say this, but be very careful with the super glue. You don't want to glue yourself to any of your project. Start by finding all eight of your part A's and part B's. You can then add a small dab of glue to the center of each A and attach it to a B. Do this until you have eight identical sets. We can now glue these eight pegs to our four corners, part E. Fit two of the parts from the previous step into each of the corners so that the longer arms cover up the small holes. 
You can then add a dab of glue from the inside corner to fix these into position. Do the same again for the other three remaining corners. Take whichever pattern piece, D, which you're using for your base. I'm using the spiral one and lay it out in front of you. You'll also need to grab your magnets. Now we need to pay close attention to their polarity as we install them. So here are some tips to help you with this. Take all of your magnets and join them end to end. Now insert a small piece of paper between the last two magnets at one of these ends. Place this on a bigger sheet of paper and label the end with no paper between the magnets as A and the other as B. From now on, we will refer to the poles as A and B, as north and south don't really matter. Whenever you put the magnets down, put them back in this position on top of this paper to help avoid any confusion later. Rotate all of your corners so they point towards the top left. Pick up one, flip it over so its point is now in the top right. On the right hand side, slide a magnet in so that its B side is facing the outside edge. Then insert the magnet in the top hole so that its A pole is facing outside. This means that when we repeat this for the other coasters, they will pull themselves together magnetically. Apply some glue to the wooden pegs inside edge and a drop on top each of your magnets. This can then be attached to the base. Repeat again for the other three, keeping the magnets organized in the same manner. Now take the two wheel spaces F and glue them together carefully through the center of the wheel C. Just make sure that you don't glue them to the wheel and you don't push them together so tightly that the wheel cannot continue to turn freely. Pop your wheel C onto the base and then carefully bring the two halves together. Awesome, now feel free to assemble some different designs and combinations to suit your tastes. You could also consider decorating them either before assembly or after to create some even more interesting designs. For example, this one I decorated with some Posca pens. You can also use uh, paints, acrylic markers, um, anything you want to really. Have fun. So let's make that super smart storage station for our coasters next. But just before we do that, I want to say a big thank you to the sponsors of this video who helped make all of this possible. That's PCBWay, Creality, and my amazing Patreons. Thank you so much. Now, if you would like to help support this channel and projects, please take a look at my Patreon page or becoming a YouTube member. All of this makes a huge difference for me to be able to keep designing, documenting, and sharing these projects with you. So if you do, thank you. So let's start assembling our smart container. First, we'll need to cut the parts out again which is as simple as placing the next sheet of wood onto the laser's bed. Open up the file to cut in Lightburn. Now move your tool head to the corner of your material. We can then head back into Lightburn and click frame. This will send the laser tool head around the boundary of the artwork. So we can check that this all falls within the edges of our material. If it is fine, Pop on your safety glasses again and press start. There are two sheets to cut for the base station. We'll assemble this sheet first, which is the part which holds the electronics and motor. Then later on in the video, we'll assemble the second sheet, which is the container section on top, which holds the coasters themselves. We'll do this after we've finished and checked all of our electronics are working properly. One of the things I really like about this Creality laser compared to my previous one is their air assist system. Basically, this air pump sends a stream of air directly into the tool head and out through the laser's nozzle. This helps to blow away excess heat and smoke generated whilst it's cutting or engraving. This is helping to improve the quality of the cut by helping prevent the smoke interfering with the laser beam. 
It also helps the bottom surface of our cut materials from becoming darkened by these byproducts and helps to keep the lens cleaner for longer. Now, in the same fashion as with the coasters, I created another helper sheet to help you identify the right piece for the right stage of this build. I strongly encourage you to refer to it. In a similar way to earlier, couple up the part A's and B's with just a drop of glue. This time round, our corner pieces are handed, as well as the bottom and top plates. So we'll get them organized now to make sure they're the right way round. Lay them out as I have, paying attention to where the cutout crosses are in the corners. We can now glue our pegs in place so that the arms covers the hole in the corner pieces. We'll put the magnets into our corners next. For this, we need to have our magnets B pole pointing outwards from each corner. Insert the magnets and add a drop of glue to hold this in place. You can then use another drop of glue to fit this to your base plate. You can verify the polarity is correct by bringing it alongside your first coaster. They should attract one another instead of repelling away. We can now glue those three small parts, E, the little tabs, into the base plate, D. Now we can start working on our electronics. Now, I've created this custom PCB for this project, which holds all the electronic components in just the right place and drastically reduces the amount of wiring we need to do. You can order one of these using the links down below this video. And don't worry, if you don't want to use this and would prefer to assemble your own circuit, then I've created this wiring diagram for you to take a look at, which will let you know how to connect all of the components together. To help position our reed switches, we'll temporarily install the wooden cut piece, part I, on top of our base. Onto this, we'll use a couple of our M4 by 5 millimeter bolts to attach the PCB to help with alignment. Now, insert one of the reed switches from the underside of the PCB. It doesn't matter which way round they go. Now, the black sensor part of the switch needs to be positioned at the bottom of this gap here. You may need to use a tool to help persuade it into position. Once there, you can bend the legs above the PCB to hold it in place and solder these two wires. Repeat this for the other three reed switches before carefully trimming off their legs. Remove the PCB from the wooden base so that we can attach the two battery holders. You can then trim the legs off these but be extra mindful because these legs will travel far and fast. So take good care of your eyes. The wires on your motor need to be three and a half centimeters long. If you've already got some on there, you may need to shorten them or attach a fresh set if not. This can then be attached to the PCB using your two M1.6 by three millimeter screws. Solder the wires onto the PCB from the motor the polarity here isn't important. We can then bolt this PCB back onto the wood with all four screws this time. If they don't secure very well, you can add a drop of glue or thread lock to the screws. Let's test this out now before we continue with the rest of the assembly to make sure that the electronics and positioning and everything else all works as we want it to. Bring your coaster alongside the base. You should hear the little electric motor start when it approaches from any of the four sides. Now that we know that it's working, we can lift off the top wooden panel with the PCB attached and use some hot melt glue or similar to fit our wheel onto the end of the motor. Don't forget to leave a small gap 
so that it does not rub on the wood. We can now reassemble this onto the rest of the base whilst making sure that those four reed switches don't become trapped. The rest of our container is then assembled just like a box whilst paying attention to the orientation of that bottom panel. Add some glue on the inside corners. The four small rectangles then go inside the corners. This sits on top of the rest of the assembly. And then finally, the last panel drops into place inside. This panel is removable, so you can change the batteries in the future if you need to. There are many more different designs and patterns for the top, bottom and middle discs for the coasters for you to download, cut and put together in any combination that you like. Why not enjoy decorating them with some younger makers and let them put their own touch to it? Or get creative and make a nice gift for someone you care about. Now I promise right at the start of this video that I would show you how I use the Falcon 2 to etch and engrave glasses and vases. So let me show you how I do that now. So first off, the energy coming from our laser beam isn't readily absorbed by the glass because of its transparent properties. To help improve its ability to absorb the energy and make these etchings, we first need to cover our glass with some dark material. Now, there are two ways that I found to do this effectively. You can either use some black tempura paint, which is easy to wash off with water after the engraving, or some Posca markers. These are much quicker drying than the tempura paint, which generally takes overnight, but is a little bit trickier to remove after you've finished the engraving. For example, I use some alcohol to help clean the glass afterwards. To prepare the laser, we'll remove the honeycomb bed and then disconnect the stepper motor at the front. To this, we'll connect our rotary modules motor. We then need to change a setting in the Falcon 2. We can do this in Lightburn by sending the following command to the laser using the console feature. This simply adjusts how quickly the motor turns. We need to do this as we're now turning the material itself as opposed to moving the Y gantry across the surface of the material. Set the correct distance from the material for engraving using the same focusing tool we used earlier. Click home in Lightburn. You'll have to manually click the homing switch at the front of the machine. You can now add to or create your artwork design in Lightburn. This will need to be turned 90 degrees and then flipped over as our engraving will be inverted by the rotary module. You can then enter your engraving settings. This is what I have found works for me with both the paint and the Posca marker when creating an infill type of engraving. You can click frame now to see a rough approximation of where our artwork is going to be applied. When you're ready, pop on your safety glasses and click start. Once done, you'll need to remove it from the machine and wash off the remaining black material. For the tempura paint, washing under warm water is enough. I use some alcohol to help remove the Posca markers. How cool are those glasses? Now, here are some of the other projects that I've been working on whilst getting to know the Falcon 2 better and finding the extent of its abilities. I'm sure there's a lot more that I'm yet to come up with, but it's certainly a machine I am glad to have in my arsenal of maker tools. Thank you Creality for sending it my way. Thank you so much for watching my video. I hope you've enjoyed watching and possibly building your own kinetic coasters. If you've enjoyed this project, 
please consider subscribing and if you can, supporting the channel either through Patreon, YouTube memberships or spreading the word about these projects. Don't forget to have a look at some of the other projects I have in my back catalogue. I'm sure you'll find something there to intrigue you. Otherwise, until the next project, do some good and ciao for now. So really quickly, before we finish off this video, I want to say thank you to PCBWay for their sponsorship in this video. I've used them to create the PCBs for many of my projects now for more than two years. They've consistently delivered in both quality and speed. If you've never made a PCB yourself, I highly recommend giving it a go via PCBWay. If you're a new customer of theirs, they have a special promotion where you can have your first five PCBs for $5 and they'll give you a $5 coupon. So effectively, you'll just need to pay for some shipping. Give it a go, you won't regret it. Now I'm going to be using a little bit. <coughs> this is all made possible. No, no. Or paint and decorate them to make them how, oh crap, what am I saying there? Paint or anything else, however you, little.